I think she'll stay with us. So, Mommy Sholai has decided to join us. Birthday, Mommy. <laughs> How are you? How is the birthday boy? The birthday boy is excellent. He's, um, yeah, he's, as far as he's concerned, it's still his birthday today. He woke up and said, Mommy, my balloons are still up, so it's still my birthday. Aww. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but he's so cute. Yesterday, I put his picture on my status. It was, oh, he's so cute. He's so, I said, please, you people should leave, leave this one and I saw no. <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> That's the plan. That's the idea. Wait, but but <laughs> Uti, I don't understand. Is it because of COVID that it's only it's only Muna and um, what's her name that came to visit him? Kilo Day now. <laughs> That's the truth. So, you know, he was like, I have to have my besties here. I had to beg Aww. and plead <laughs> and prod NASA to release them to me. Aww. So he has his besties in his picture. Absolutely. All right. So happy birthday again to him. Um, so, Lami, let me come to you first. What did you find for us in the news today? Okay. Um, today was such a sad moment, but um, mm -hmm. what can we do? The first uh, elected civilian governor of Lagos State, the um, ex -go former governor, Latif Kao de Jakonde, prepared his last this morning at the age of 91. So, I, I would say that was an end of an era. It's unfortunate that we lost um, someone of that caliber because if you look at his antecedents, I would say from my own estimation, he was the best governor that ever ruled in it. And I would say, and I'll tell you why. He was able to achieve quite a number of things in a very, very short while. His term was just for four years, I think four years and three months. And he was able to achieve three years. He did a lot of low budget um, housing in Lagos. He, during his reign, that was when um, Lagos State University was established. Quite a number, I can go on and on and on. And so that's to say that a lot of governors or leaders at this time that come up with the, with the, with the stories of how they can achieve things in four years, four years is too short. So how did Lassif Jack Conde, how was he able to achieve all this in a state of four months and four years and three months. So I, I think we, a, a lot of leaders at this time need to buckle up. So it's so sad. Um, my condolences to his family and, um, and the people of Lagos State. And funny enough, I didn't know he was not originally from Lagos. He wow. was originally from Para. And he did that much exploit in Lagos, which is really really commendable hmm. but i think he lived a good life if you ask me i mean living up to 90 i um i guess 91 91 yeah, yeah so I, I think he's he's done well he's lived a good life we just pray for the families you know and everybody yeah <laughs> this season i think i don't know because it's of so sad, much death but, um... so much death has, has happened it's almost like mm, at this point, you know what? Just at least he lived up to 91, so we should be grateful to God for that. Uti, you wanted to say something. Thank God. He left an amazing legacy as well. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He left an amazing legacy for Lagos State. No matter what you say today, in almost every area of Lagos State, there's a reference to Jack on Day, whether Absolutely. it's housing, whether yeah. it's education. I mean, it doesn't matter yeah. what it has become today, but I mean, he laid some fantastic foundations and, you know, made his soul yeah. extensive. What is just sad is Amen. how we're not able to build on that, you know. Because imagine if, you know, right? yeah, I just imagine mm. how, how that vision would have translated if like minds like him, you know, had continued um, the um, governance. Carried the torch. Yeah. Mm. All right, Uti, so what did you find for us in the news? Well, hmm. So I was talking about this today, about not knowing... So cryptocurrency is one of those things, right, that has kind of gone over my head. Like, I know a bit about it, but to UTI standards, not quite enough just yet. But this headline today um, caught my attention, and it says, Access Bank, um, GT Bank, begin closing customer accounts that have traded cryptocurrency. Of course, this is on the back of CBN now um, banning or restricting uh, access to accounts, or rather, 
banning cryptocurrencies, actually, that's what I should call it, because that's what it is. They've instructed the banks to close accounts associated with cryptocurrency. They've closed accounts of, of crypto exchanges. And really, for me, why this story sticks out for two things, being that you all know that I'm a customer experience person, right? This story speaks about the experiences of customers of these different of these two banks who have essentially tried to access their accounts and then found out that their accounts have been closed with no prior notification or any warning that their accounts have been closed. One of the the interesting ones was one of the the, um, the persons was talking about how he had traded with his account in um, GT Bank, but he hadn't traded with his account in another bank, and his account in that bank had been closed as well. Wow! So it was positing whether his accounts were traced via bvn of course but for me beyond the, the, yeah beyond the customer experience issue it comes back to the question of why is cbn doing this and why is it doing this now mm. now when i was sort of looking into this as far back as 2017 cbn was actually saying oh we're going to release a white paper about cryptocurrency we set up four units within the bank and you know we, we understand that between them and scc this needs to be regulated and then all of a sudden on the back of nsars you know, whether you want to call it conspiracy or not, too many things are coinciding at the same time. You know, on the back of NSARS, we have this frenzy for NIN and, and phone numbers. And then now we're seeing this frenzy again for, um, we're seeing this frenzy again for, um, what's it called now? For um, cryptocurrencies and banning accounts. Of course, we know that during the protests, we had cryptocurrencies that were being used to fund the protest when accounts started to be frozen and blocked. So, um, we find now that as we're going into this, okay, so we find is that we're, as we're going into this um, protest that might be coming up this weekend, mm. uh, it'll be interesting to see what where this will go. But I think that it's, <laughs> it just shows that the government continues to take the, the hard road. There, there are easier ways to do these things. You can engage <laughs> people. You can talk to people. I tell you. Can, you. I mean, we, we are your citizenry. You can't put the hammer down on everything and just kill it. Because that's, that's where, you think you're going if I, that's why I said that our quote is so apt. Can I say something quickly? Quickly, Lami, so I can take my story. Oh, can I chip in something quickly? Quickly. Okay, so for me, my take on this issue is, at the time they traded on, this account traded in cryptocurrency, it wasn't a crime at that time. It wasn't banned. So I don't see why the law should now be applied retrospectively. I think that is a breach under fundamental human rights. Because at the time it was traded, it wasn't banned in the country. It should be so going how can forward. You go as far as back as mm -hmm. account that traded, not trading. Do you understand? So yeah. I think uh, they need to challenge that too. Absolutely. Mm. So let me just quickly, um, it, it's almost linked to Uti's story, court orders CBN to unfreeze the hashtag NSARS activity um, account. So the Justice um, Ahmed Mohammed of the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja yesterday ordered the Central Bank of Nigeria to immediately unfreeze 20 bank accounts linked to protesters and the promoters of the hashtag NSARS protest against police um, brutality. So this order um, he gave um, following the withdrawal of the suit by the council to the CBN, you know, and um, I think um, a lot of, some of the um, protesters have come out to say that they, they would also sue um, CBN for even freezing their accounts in the first place. But I hear that, you know, I, I'm not 100% um, sure, but I hear that this has not been um, if, um, affected yet. So I'm just wondering, you know, these are the things that we keep saying that the government seems to be more like a vindictive style of governance, like almost oppressive style of governance. If there is something happening, you know, I think... Um, like uh, what Lamy was saying about instead of tr going back to trace uh, people that have done transactions in the past and all of that, you know, why can't we just say, you know what, there's a new rule on the ground and going forward to this time, um, no more, um, um, what's it called, like the cryptocurrency, for example. So um, Femi Falana has also called for, I think, the withdrawal, that they should strike out the case from the courts, you know. But I would really want the protesters that their accounts were frozen to sue the federal uh, CBN. So that tomorrow they will not just wake up and say they want to freeze people's accounts just like that. What do you think? So, if you're going to sue people, right? Well, I mean, I agree with you. We need to take a stand. We need to show that this is not the way to go. It just, you know, every time when it happened back in October, do you remember when the circular went round to all the media houses saying, "Don't embarrass us. 
report this the right way. It, we can't, the government can't continue to do this. Yes, there are right ways and wrong ways to do things. But I think that, yes, it, the sad part of it is that in this part of the world, we all know, I mean, Lamy could probably give us a bit more insight into that. We know that the legal system, it will just drag and drag and drag forever. And these people will be getting even more and more out of pocket. But, you know, something does need to be done. It's ridiculous. I, I, I mean, it, it does Let them just sue. <laughs> Let them sue. All right, so that's all we can take for what's in the news. We'll still talk about this NSAS protest because even the conversation that we're having today is actually somewhat tied to the conversation. So we'll take a break. When we return, we're asking how safe are we in, in, in Lagos, especially given the situation that we saw that happened in Obala in the earlier hours of today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 